Hi everyone. I'd like to start this video in prayer. If you could please bow your heads. <laughs> I'm kidding. Heavenly Father, God, angels of the highest truth and compassion, I come before you today and I ask you that you speak through me, that the words that come out of my mouth are filled with love and compassion and mercy and understanding. I pray that the words that come out of my mouth are your words and not mine. I pray that the message that I'm trying to deliver, the message that's in my heart is received and relayed in a way that shows what is truly in my heart. Thank you in advance. Amen. And I pray, hold on, no, 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 hold on. And I pray that you open up the hearts of my viewers. I pray that you open up the hearts of the people that are watching this video, that you may minister to the hearts that need it, that need forgiveness, that need a little bit of your love. Amen. I felt strongly compelled last week to speak about King Face, to speak about how I feel about him. I still get so nervous. I'm so nervous right now. Okay. If you're wondering why I'm so nervous to speak about this person, if you don't know who King Face is, King Face is and was a person that had a lot of controversial views and lived a very controversial life. It was a public figure, spent a lot of time trying to change the minds and hearts of people. And on top of that, you know, he gave me HIV. I've put off speaking about him. This is a sign I met. King face I met Angel March 12th of 2019 I was like in a really bad place I was like super drunk I was blacked out and if you saw the videos from before like something went down I got punched in the face and um, he basically like saved me you know he picked me up from the ground he was like what do you need like where, like, where can I take you where you need to go like he was really trying his best to um, make sure that I was safe his friends or like his co-workers because he was filming for his podcast or a podcast I'm not sure um, they were telling him advising him to leave me like in the side of the road and he did it almost instantly I felt like so much gratitude and so much appreciation for this person even though things got a little like it started off bad really bad like from the beginning so it was really shady stuff from the very beginning and I don't really want to get into those details in this video but I just want to share with you my sentiments regarding him and everything that happened to me. I know that due to my heart and due to how I guarded it and protected it from hate is how I'm able to live and thrive and love again today because I don't hate him and I never did and I don't think that I ever will. Throughout the course of our relationship, one would say that he was a narcissist and um, I can't disagree with him. I needed therapy because of that, not just because of the HIV, not even really because of the HIV. I wasn't sure if the ground that I was standing on was actually real or not due to the interactions that we had. However, I chose to love him and I feel like as the words come out of my mouth, I feel like I'm sounding like him because he told me many times, he's like, listen, no one's forcing you to be here. You could walk out that door and of course he knew that that was like um, a power ploy right the reason why i loved him i accepted him for who he was even though there was so much that i knew he wasn't telling me there were so many lies what i do know for a fact is that i love who i became while i was with him and i think that's was what made me fall deeper in love because i was falling deeper in love with myself he wasn't a very loving person it was more pain than there was love. The love that I desired, I had to give it to me myself. I had to get myself my flowers. I had to take myself out on dates. I had to really love on myself and, and, and remind myself of how beautiful I was. And it was just such a beautiful experience that I was having with myself. Not to mention that I, my body was dying for more than half of our relationship without me knowing. And he knew what was happening to me. He took care of me. Like he's anyway. As I was dying, as I was going through this process, as I was living with HIV without knowing it, I was experiencing such a supernatural love for myself that I never knew it could be possible. 
And that's the only way that I can explain it. One of the affirmations that I tell myself often, I do not need to be in a painful relationship in order to grow. I'm making this video because I feel I loved him very purely. Even when I found out that I had HIV, I never went to him and said, you gave me HIV, like what's wrong with you? Like it was never that kind of conversation. It was like, I have HIV, you need to get on meds too. In fact, like our biggest arguments were me trying to get him to go to the doctor, me trying to get him to get some blood work done, something that he would never, never do. Because of the love that I have for him, that I feel like I can speak on this because I think that this is what he would have wanted. I think that he would have wanted to be remembered forever. I can only imagine what he went through in order to intentionally give women HIV. I can only imagine the pain and the hatred in his heart. No one deserves that. Not even him. I'm not defending him. I'm seeing him with compassion and humanity. If he were still alive, I would do what I needed to do. I did try to do what I needed to do and it was to no avail. Me and um, another one of his victims attempted to go as far as to the FBI. It, it didn't work. Now that here's where we are, now that um, it seems as if he is dead, and the reason why I say it, se it seems as if is because I'm not 100% sure that he's dead. I think that he would have wanted to be remembered. And I want my story to be told. This is not meant to cause pain to anyone else that he infected. This is basically to say that, that I'm not, I'm not his victim. I am victim to what he did, but I'm victim to my actions as well. And I do believe in the law of attraction. And I attracted him into my world and he attracted me into his. Knowing who I am, knowing what I'm capable of, knowing what he was capable of. I hope that maybe this video can help him in his next lifetime to be able to forgive the people that he needs to forgive, people that were supposed to take care of him and didn't, the people that failed him, the community that failed him. That's how I feel about King Face. I don't hate him. Now I feel like I don't really even love him. I feel like I feel nothing because there's nothing to be felt. But I do realize that I learned a lot from him, so that's something that I, I just can't regret that part of my life because of that part of, because of him, because of his actions and because of mine, I'm here where I am today. Whereas if I would have never met him, I'm not even sure I would be alive today. That's why it's so different for me. I know there's some people that were nurses and people that had careers and a future and they still do, they still do. I felt like I was dying with or without him. Getting this diagnosis is kind of what saved my life and put me right back on track to where I needed to be. I don't think that the world needs any more hate. I can't preach that. It's not in me and it's not in me for him. If it was, then I would say it, but it's not. I thank him and I, and I feel bad for him because he was truly amazing, truly a genius, definitely very admirable, work ethic, incredible. And he believed in his dreams and he believed in his people. A lot of people can see that he hated women. Maybe he did. He believed there was no glass ceiling for black people. There was no glass ceiling for the underdog. He lived many lives in his lifetime and it seemed as though he had found his way, his path, his voice. It sucked that the stigma of having HIV was stronger than the freedom found in treating it and living through it, you know? I think he knew that eventually his end was death and can't say if there was peace or not at the end of it all, but I thought about this like when I found out that he was hospitalized. I'm glad that he was able to be loved by me. I only hope that one day I can experience the love that I gave to him. And maybe I'm experiencing it now. Maybe after I release this video, I can realize the love that's currently in my life. Um, so, if someone has hurt you and you don't know how to forgive them, just remember that you have life ahead of you. And this person, this thing that happened to you, whether you were a child, whether it was something 
totally different than what I've experienced. This person should not have power over your life anymore. They already did for that moment in time. But that moment in time has passed, that moment in time has gone, and now you're the one that's in power. You're the one that's living this life that you can make beautiful, and that is your revenge. And I wouldn't even say that's your revenge, that is your gift, that is your reward. That is what you're worthy of. You are worthy of a beautiful life in spite and despite and because of all of what you've been through. There are no mistakes in this world. If you decide to, you can choose to transform this pain into your superpower. You can transform this pain into the greatest love that has ever existed because that is power. It would be so easy for me to hate him. It would be so logical for me to hate him. But then he wins. And then even him, what he was going through wins. His pain wins. He didn't have to choose pain and for moments, brief moments in time, I know that he didn't. That's why he didn't talk about it. We couldn't talk about it. It was not allowed to talk about the diagnosis. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. However, it is transformed. You can transform that energy of pain into energy of love, the frequency of, of destruction into the frequency of creation. You can change it just as I changed it, just as I will continue to change it. And it's not gonna stop. It's never gonna stop. I've been called to this life in this time to spread love. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Anyway, I love you guys. And um, I just thank you for being here with me. That's all.